Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at implementing just testing. So we've already created our issue, we've uh, created our branch down here, and we've already set it up so that we're on our branch on our local machine. Right now we're inside of our project repository and we'll go ahead and we'll get started from here. Uh, there's two types of testing that we could cover. In this one we're going to be covering just testing. Uh, there is also the issue of needing to clean up our Rails tests because we did do that refactor to the API v1 for the post controller, which is going to break a lot of our tests on the Rails side of things. So we can see here this post URL no longer exists, so it's throwing an error everywhere. So that's something we have to clean up later. But right now let's focus on the client side tests real quick. To do that, we can come into our client and this is pretty much where we're gonna be doing everything that we need to here. So what I'm actually gonna do is uh, CD into our client and I'm gonna run a code dot from inside here so that things don't get too confusing. Once we're in this client directory, I'm gonna come into the readme because we need to run a import or 10 uh, for all of our dependencies. Now I don't use like React, you know, professionally or anything. So I do wanna like preface this by saying that my knowledge here might be a little bit outdated. So there might be better ways to do this. So I go to like the comments and see if someone says, hey, you don't need to import the, all this stuff, just import X, Y, or Z. But in terms of how I did this, these were the uh, just installation requirements, I guess. And for this, I just do a bash, I paste this in. So I would go to the uh, GitHub repository. It's gonna be in the video description. It'll be a source link right below like the first three lines or whatever. I always put the source link. You can just go to the GitHub repo, go into the client directory, go into the readme and then just copy this. The reason why is because like typing all this out just seems like a waste of your time if I'm being honest. So I think this is just a better way of doing it. So I'll leave it in here and you don't need all of this V stuff up here. So that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this though. Uh, and then we'll see what happens. So we'll come to our terminal. I'm in the client directory. This is important. I'm not doing this for my Rails directory, but I'm running npm install save dev for all of these dependencies. So we have our jest, our testing library. We have our transformers or Babel and a bunch of other stuff. Now this is gonna require us to go through and create a couple of configuration files. So right now we need to create a new file. While this is running, we can do this. We need a jest.config.cjs for, I think it's a common JavaScript is why it's called that. But then we have our eslintrc.cjs file. And then we also want a .babelrc file uh, for other reasons. Let's start in the Babel file for now. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna paste this in, and I'm actually gonna remove this line right here for now, because uh, that's the line we actually use to make this work without needing to require uh, React in all of our components. Then we're gonna come into our eslint file, and in our eslint file, we wanna add two lines to our env right here. So first we have our browser, then we have es2020, as of the time of this recording. Oops, and then we want to add a just line that we set to true and then a node line that we set to true because I'm using some global variables and my ESLint formatter was freaking out because it you know said this stuff doesn't exist. So I added these two lines that helped to fix it. And then I also added a plugin for just under the extends. And that's pretty much it for the ESLint. Now let's come into the just config. This is gonna be another file where you probably wanna to go to the GitHub repository just because there's a regular expression here that's trying to match for the JSX files. Uh, that's for our transformer. We then have our setup after ENV, which is running the testing library just DOM. We have the JS DOM and then we have all the module names for like CSS and all that other stuff happening. All of that's gonna get put into a root file or root folder. Uh, so it's right here with the like node modules and everything else. We can create a new folder. We'll call this underscore, underscore, mox, underscore, underscore, like that. And then in this mox file, we can create a couple of uh, other files. So one could be like a style mock.js. Uh, so if you want to like, you know, set up any type of styles in here, you can do that. And then the other one we can do is like a constants.js. If we need to mock up any API constants, like for API URL, we can grab it from here later. So we'll just set the API URL to be like a mocked API URL. Again, probably better ways to do this, uh, but that's just one of the ways that I got everything working. So that takes care of our just config. Now let's take a look, let's, or let's come into our console, which is hopefully done running now, and let's run a npm run test. And I expect this to not work. We'll take a look at why. 
So it tells us there's a missing script for test. And the reason why it's telling us that is if we come into the package.json, we can find our scripts right here because it said missing script. So something in here is missing test. And you can see there is no test. So if we were to do like test and then just have this run something, right? And we can do a comma afterwards. If we now come over here, we can run a npm run test and this will just say something and then permission denied because something doesn't actually exist. It's trying to run a program called something, but like that command doesn't do anything, right? We could change this. I could say like do as the keyword and then we can run npm run do, which will then run something. Of course, we want this to stay as test and we want to be running jest. So we'll just run it like this. And now we can run npm run test. This will tell us that it found no tests. Now you can run this with pass with no tests, which I think uh, Copilot was suggesting there. So if we run this with dash dash pass with no tests, we can then run this and you can see now you don't get an error, uh, but you still don't have any tests. So this still isn't really helping us, right? So let's create a very small test real quick. We can do that by coming into SRC. We can come into our components. It doesn't really make sense to have these in components. We should move them, but for now we'll just stick with this uh, double convention we got going on. And we'll create a uh, navbar dot test, oops, test dot JSX. So it's the same name as our navbar. We just have dot test in front of the dot JSX. Now in here, what we can do is we can start by importing our navbar. We can also uh, describe our first test. We can close this. In here, what we'll do is we'll say, all right, now we know in our navbar, if I close all of this other stuff that nobody cares about, we know in our nav bar that we have two links. So let's test uh, that we can uh, render both these links, right? You'd usually want to break this up into two different tests, uh, but we'll just do one that tests both of them. So we'll say we want to have a test, renders both links. Oops, and then we can go down here and close this. And then we want to say at the start, render the nav bar then we want to expect uh, the links to be there or something, right? So let's start by doing the uh, rendering of the navbar. We'll call a function right here called render navbar. And then we can come up here just above this. We can do const render navbar. And then we can uh, in here call render for the navbar component. So this render comes from our at testing dash library slash react. We can render the nav bar, but then we, uh, I mean, we can try this and we don't need to do any like assertions or anything. If we try this, we'll just see if things are upset with us. And you can see right here, we're already running into an issue. It's telling us react is not defined. Now we can try to have react defined by coming into our test and we can import react from react, which doesn't make any sense here. Uh, for like a, a myriad of reasons. But now we see that we're running into this cannot destructure property base name because of React namespace, blah, 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 as it is null. So let's go ahead after this nav bar and we can add in some other magic, which is gonna be for a wrapper, which is gonna be our memory router, I think is what I called it. And then we need to grab the memory router from, I guess, right here. So we can grab memory router from React router DOM, save this, and then we can run our npm run test again, try to test our components and we can see this is working. So right here, you can see this import react in our nav bar test is causing this to work. So we actually don't need this, this uh, import react right here. We can just leave it in our test file and everything will work just fine. But just like having this in our, uh, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Apparently now it's also upset if it's not in the nav bar. So I guess we need it in the nav bar as well. So let's go ahead and let's put it back in the nav bar as well and see which one of these causes this. There we go. Okay, so everything's passing. Uh, but it's really inconvenient to have this in multiple places. People are going to bully you for having React being imported in your nav bar like they were in the comments. So we should fix this. So instead of importing React into all of our files, let's come into our, I think it's not our ESLint. Uh, it's going to be our, we're going to come into our Babel RC file. And then in our Babel RC file, we're gonna add an extra line to our presets. So we'll come in here and we'll just say uh, something like this. So now we have this at Babel preset react comma, and then we're passing in 
this bit right here where we set the runtime to be automatic. And if we do this, we can actually come in here now and we can get rid of both of these reacts. We can run our tests again. And with Babel running, it'll still pass, but now we don't need to have all that other cringe stuff. Now it doesn't make sense because we're expecting nothing right now, but bear with me. We at least have this working without all of those imports. So now we can do a control shift F and we can find every instance of the word react being imported. So we can do like import react maybe. And that'll find a couple different areas. So we can see in our main.jsx we're doing it, but let's go into all of our, our files and we'll get rid of it. So like our app routes, our post details doesn't need it anymore. And our post list doesn't need it anymore. And we can get rid of all of those. So that takes care of that. Again, just to test, no pun intended, we'll run NPM run test. Everything's still passing because we're not actually testing anything. But okay, let's come into our nav bar test now and let's expect the links to be on the page. Now this is a little bit weird. This always kind of makes some sense but doesn't make enough sense for me you're going to use the expect keyword you're going to say screen dot get by text and then you're going to expect the post list text to be on the screen because if we come into our nav bar we can see post list right here in our link so we expect the post link list to be in the document and then we can do something similar for uh, the other link which should be uh, new post so we expect new post to be in the document, but I'm going to leave this as create new post so that we can get an error. So let's go ahead and let's run this test. This will error out and you can see right here, navbar component renders both links failed. Screen get by text uh, is not a function. So that's why it's being upset with us here, but it is a function. We're just not importing it. So next to this render right here, we can also just grab screen and then we can run this again. And then we can see that, that that error goes away, but now we're gonna get a different error. And you can see up here, uh, unable to find an element with the text create new post. This could be because the text is broken up by multiple elements, blah, 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 blah. But we know that's not why. We know the reason why you can't find a element with the text create new post is because in here it just says new post. So our test and our component don't match up. So let's change our component to say create new post instead. So I think that's more clear. We can run our test again. And now we can hopefully see this works just fine. And now if anyone ever comes in here and they add like an exclamation mark to this uh, because they're a junior developer trying to help, that's going to cause the test to fail because you can't find it anymore. So we'll leave it like this with the create new post and that's gonna give us our first working test. At this point, it's probably a good idea to take your code, do a git add dot, git commit dash m. Also, some people are upset if you do a git add dot uh, generally, you don't want to do it because you might add like files you weren't thinking of. Uh, but in my case, I, I usually know which files I'm adding when I do that in the videos, which is why I get away with it. Uh, it's all of the files we added and created here, uh, along with these folders, our configs. We modified the package lock and the JSON, of course, because we or the package.json because we added those files. We came into our uh, different components here to remove the React and all that other stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do a git commit dash M and we'll say added basic jest testing, something like that. I can see we have our commit right here. Let's go ahead and let's do a git push to push up this commit. We can come over here to our code again. And we can see we've implemented the jest testing right here. So that'll be up here. And now we can come, oops, we can come over to here, compare and pull request, create the pull request. And then in our pull request, we can check out the files that we've changed. So we added all of the ones with the green pluses next to them, which makes sense. And then the orange ones are the ones we changed. So let's come into like our, uh, yeah, like our post details. So in our post details, we can see that we just removed React. We just removed React. So both of those are fine. We know we tested or we created this navbar test. We know that we changed this word in our navbar component. We know that we removed React from the app routes. We know that we added all of this stuff to our package.json. We know that the package lock.json is always cringe and we don't want to look at it. Our jest config makes sense. We know our style mocks were things we did and we know we updated the readme and that we messed with the ESLint and the Babel RC. So now we can see we've reviewed all 13 files. Say it looks good to me because uh, of course it does. I'm, I'm the one that wrote the code and come over here and we could merge this pull request. Now, there is the issue for um, 
like this was technically for implementing just testing, you are gonna want to have other things for like your other components. So we still need to test more stuff, but we'll cover that in a future video. For now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna merge this and we'll call it a video there. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, I'm gonna be bulk recording a couple of these videos. So you might not see those things addressed for a couple of videos, but I'll get to them eventually. But for now, thank you so much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.